So here I have the definition of a ring that I copied from the uh, first video in this series. And um, my, my question to you in this video is if R is a ring and if uh, S is some arbitrary subset of R, uh, which properties which properties of a ring or which properties of R will be which properties of R will be automatically automatically inherited inherited by S inherited by The, the assumption that S is arbitrary is very important here. We want this to work for every, every subset. So to answer this question, we can kind of um, go through each one of these um, properties here and really just examine if it really is inherited by any arbitrary subset. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, if you remember from uh, group theory, I could have pretty much asked you the same exact question. And if you if you know your group theory, you probably would have told me uh, this one and this one. But let's go through each of these and and um, and kind of examine why that is. So let's start with here. So this is the closure property. Um, if 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 let's say that here's R. Let's draw a little diagram here. This is R. And let's say that. S is some arbitrary subset, but let's say that this is S. Now in order for S to be closed, we would have to be able to take any two elements of S, any two elements of S, let's say that's them. These are our, these two little dots here, our two little elements. And in order for it to be closed, we'd have to be able to add these together, and that resulting sum would still have to be in S. But now if S is chosen by random, by the elements of S are chosen by random. There's no guarantee that this element plus this element is still going to be in S. It could, but it could also be somewhere out here. There's no guarantee yet based on an arbitrary S. So closure is not automatically inherited by uh, an arbitrary subset. This here though, associativity, is this is a property of the operation addition. This doesn't really have anything to do with the elements of R. It's purely based on the binary operation that was chosen, which we chose addition. Addition is an associative operation, so any subset of that, any subset of R is going to also be associative because we're using the same operation. Um, number three here, the zero. If um, I think this one's pretty straightforward. If S is chosen, the elements of S is chosen by random, there's no guarantee that zero is going to be one of those elements that are chosen. Zero could be in here or it could be out here. So the zero is not, this is not a property that is, um, that will be inherited by a, an arbitrary S. And likewise, uh, additive inverses will also not be uh, automatically inherited because, let's say, here's our element. Um, we know it does have an additive inverse in R because R is a ring, but there's no guarantee that that additive inverse is also in S. It could be out here. I mean, this could be our additive inverse. If, uh, the, if the elements of S are chosen by random, then there's no guarantee that, that A and its inverse are also going to be in there. Uh, commutivity. Um, again, this is, um, just like this one, this is completely dependent upon the operation you've chosen. Addition is a commutative operation, so this property is going to hold for any elements of R, regardless of um, which ones you choose to be in S. Um, closure, closure under multiplication, this is just like this one. Um, if we take any two elements in here and multiply them together, there's no guarantee that th the product is also going to be an element of S. It could be out here. Uh, associativity under multiplication. Um, this is also dependent upon the operation we've chosen. Multiplication is an associative operation, so this is going to hold for any elements of uh, any elements of any subset. And 
dependent distributive property. Same story here. This is also dependent upon um, both the operations at the same time. These are both binary operations and they're both associative. I mean, and, and they both have, um, the distributive property both holds on both of them is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's say that we're interested in the question that um, if S is some arbitrary subset, or, or sorry, some specific subset of a ring R, we're interested in the question as to is, is S a ring itself under the same operations that we use to define R? And to answer that question, well, we could go through and verify each of these, um, I guess you could think of it as each of these eight properties of rings and see if they hold for R, for S and prove that it's a ring that way. Or we could use the fact that we know, we, we now know based off of this question, we know that uh, associativity under addition will always hold for any subset. Uh, commutivity under addition will also hold for any subset of a ring. And likewise, uh, associativity under multiplication and the distributive property, all of these hold under for any subset, including um, this S here. So if we want to know whether S is a ring under the operations of R, since it's a subset, the only ones we really need to check are closure under addition, um, making sure that the, the additive identity zero is an element of that subset. We need to know whether or not every element in our subset has its additive inverse also in that subset. And then lastly, we would need to show that the subset is closed under multiplication. So you might have already guessed as to what I'm kind of getting at here. If we have some uh, subset of a ring and we figure out, we, if we, we, we go ahead and prove that that subset is also a ring, then we would say that um, that subset is called a subring of the ring. So let me, uh, let me give you that actual definition here. Uh, let me get rid of this. Okay, so um, a, let's say a set a set, oops, a set S is a subring, subring of R. We're assuming R is a ring. Uh, S is a subring of R if the following hold. One, S is first and foremost a subset of R. That one's pretty easy to verify. And two, S is also a ring under the same operations as R. So under the operations of R. Operations of R. So in order to to actually verify this, like we just said, the only things you need to show are both closures. You need to know that the additive identity is in there, and you need to know that every element has its additive inverse also in the ring. So if you're trying to prove, if you're trying to do a subring proof, uh, the things you need to know, or the, th the things you need to show, so a subring proof, that is if you're trying to show one ring is a subring of another, so a subring proof, this is a four step proof. One, closure under addition, you need to show two, closure under multiplication, closure under multiplication. Three, you need to know whether or not the additive identity zero is also in S. Since this is a subset of R, you know that there is an additive identity because R is a ring. But the question is whether or not that additive identity is in the subset. So we want to know that zero is an element of S. And lastly, um, kind of like this one, we already know that every element does have an additive inverse. The question is whether or not that additive inverse is also in the set. So inverses, inverses. And um, so I'm just kind of trying to outline the kind of idea behind subrings in this video. In the next video, I will do a, an example of a subring, and I will 
actually I will actually prove um, that one ring is a subring of another ring. So I will see you in the next video. Oh, oh, and um, don't forget to check out the uh, practice problems in the description of this video. And if you find them difficult, um, you should probably watch the next one because I'm going to do an example.